Of the solar energy that reaches the Earth, the most important fraction is the 47% or roughly 160 watts per meter that reaches the surface and is absorbed. Because the energy radiated up from the Earth is what warms the lower atmosphere where we live and where climate and weather happen. The fact that the lower atmosphere is heated from below can be seen in the way temperature changes over the daily cycle. Consider the pattern in the amount of solar radiation arriving at a typical point on Earth over a 24-hour period. Solar radiation only falls during the 12 hours of daylight in the 24-hour day, so solar energy will start falling on a spot at roughly 6 a.m. and continue until 6 p.m. The amount of energy absorbed increases from dawn until midday as the sun rises higher and higher in the sky, and the sun's light rays hit the surface of the Earth more directly. Energy absorption peaks at solar noon when the sun is directly overhead. It then decreases until sunset. If this solar energy was warming the atmosphere directly, temperature change would follow the same pattern. That is, temperature would be lowest right at dawn, it would rise until solar noon, and then drop as the sun went down. But that is not what we see. Starting at midnight, temperatures drop until after the sun comes up. And once temperatures do start rising, they continue to rise well past solar noon. So the minimum temperature occurs just after sunrise and peaks as much as three to five hours after the maximum amount of solar insulation reaches the ground. This atmospheric temperature pattern matches patterns in the amount of energy radiating from the ground to the atmosphere, shown here in the blue on the lower chart. The steady loss of energy from the ground to the atmosphere while the ground is warmer than the air and the arched shaped pattern of the ground absorbing solar energy is what causes this temperature pattern with net loss of heat from the atmosphere until just after dawn, then a period of gain of energy during the day as heat the ground absorbs from the sun is quickly radiated into the atmosphere followed by a return to loss of energy and therefore lowering temperatures as the sun sets. This is the diurnal temperature cycle. In addition to the diurnal cycle, the shape of the earth causes energy to fall unevenly along lines of latitude. More energy is absorbed at low latitude and less at higher latitudes. At low latitudes, the sun hits the earth at a high angle of incidence. This means that a given amount of solar radiation will fall on a smaller area at the equator than it will at higher latitudes. So the energy reaching the ground is more concentrated. The high angle also means that less of the energy is reflected. At mid-latitudes, the sun hits the earth at a lower angle of incidence. This means that, that a set amount of solar radiation will fall on a larger area when compared to lower latitudes. This makes the energy less concentrated, and the lower angle also allows more of the energy to be reflected. This trend continues so that at very high latitudes near the poles, the angle of incidence is very low, causing the area of a given amount of sunlight to be spread out even more. As the angle of incidence gets smaller, the lower angle causes more energy to be reflected instead of being absorbed. The low angle of incidence also means that this sunlight must pass through more atmosphere, so more of it is reflected or absorbed by the atmosphere before even getting to the ground. Another thing that changes as we move from lower to higher latitudes is the amount of snow and ice present. Since snow and ice are more reflective than soil, water, and plants, the snow and ice near the poles causes more energy to be reflected at high latitudes. Albedo is the term used to describe the amount of energy reflected versus absorbed. Therefore, we can say that snow and ice near the poles increases the albedo at high latitudes relative to low latitudes. In summary, given an equal amount of solar radiation falling at different latitudes, more energy is absorbed closer to the equator because at high latitudes, the lower angle of incidence causes the light to be less concentrated, reflect more, both due to the angle of incidence and higher albedo near the poles. And finally, the path the energy takes causes it to pass through more atmosphere, meaning more of it is absorbed or reflected before ever even reaching the ground. This can be represented graphically to show how energy flows to and from the atmosphere vary with latitude. The amount of energy absorbed by the Earth and then radiated to the atmosphere peaks at the equator and falls with increasing latitude. The amount of heat lost by the atmosphere to space peaks at the equator and falls to either pole, but the variation with latitude is not as large. This causes an imbalance in energy with a net gain of heat by the atmosphere at low latitudes and a net loss of heat near the poles. We know that heat will flow from regions of higher temperature to lower temperature, so this imbalance causes heat to move from lower to higher latitudes via ocean and atmospheric circulation. This movement of heat is what structures regional climate conditions around the globe and drives many large-scale weather events. So far, we've been discussing an idealized Earth with maximum amount of solar insulation at the equator, which decreases with increasing latitude both north and south. 
but the Earth is a dynamic system. It rotates once every 24 hours, and the orientation of that rotation is tilted relative to the orbit of the Sun, meaning the point closest to the Sun, and therefore the region that gets the most amount of solar insulation, changes over the annual cycle. During the Northern Hemisphere's winter solstice, the orientation puts 23 degrees south latitude closest to the Sun. As the Earth proceeds along its orbit, the latitude of the closest point to the Sun decreases until it hits the equator during the Northern Hemisphere's spring equinox. The latitude of the closest point then moves north until it reaches a maximum point to the north at the Northern Hemisphere's summer solstice, at which point it starts moving back towards the equator. Knowing how energy flows vary between day and night with latitude and over the annual cycle provides insights into factors that drive our climate and determine the distribution of different forms of life on Earth.